Hey everybody, welcome to eTrailer.com. I'm Bobby, and today we're taking a look at the Highland Rack's destination for backrack carrier here on the back of our 2021 Ford Bronco. So guys, right out of the gate, the big thing that's going to be for me, we actually do have to give you guys a little caveat on what we're working with on our Bronco. So today, we are working on our draw tight hitch. Now, as of currently filming this video, we only have two options of it available here at eTrailer.com. This draw tight hitch, which has a really nice extension, getting you kind of past your spare tire, and the Kurt hitch receiver, which kind of sits more like the standard factory one. It sits underneath your bumper more. So if you guys have the towing package from Ford itself, from the original manufacturer, or you guys are working with the Kurt, things might be a little different. And personally, if you have the option, if you haven't gotten the tow package already, I highly recommend going with the draw tight here. Now you might get into some slight weird clearance issues later on because this extends it. However, especially for bike racks, this is going to be almost integral. As you guys can see, our handle or pedals right here are already very close to the spare tire. So if we didn't have the draw tight, we would not be able to fit this guy on here. A, at least utilizing this first portion of our bike. But secondly, we might even have issues just with getting the hitch carrier in here. So that could be an issue. So that's kind of the big thing to look out for when you are comparing your Broncos to ours that we have here today. But Let's bring it back to the Hollywood Destination Rack. This guy is still going to be a great way of transporting four bikes for you, your friends, or your family, of course. Now, I will say it is a bit of an eyesore. We'll just get out of the gate right there. It's not the best looking bike rack out there. However, I think you're becoming a bigger fan of it, just like I have, as you can start seeing how well this does of securing your bikes and getting your bikes to where you want to go. And honestly, for a four bike platform rack, A, it's not going to be the break in the bank, which is great. And secondly, it's very, very light. So it's going to be easy to move and it's not going to be taking up too much room and be this huge thing that you don't want to mess with all the time. It's going to take us no time to pop this off. So we can go ahead and see our nice, beautiful Bronco on the back end. Now on the front here, or I guess I should say the rear, you are seeing these little reflect reflectors here. What I like about those, they're not standard across enough the, across the industry enough. In my opinion, it's nice to let people know where we are especially when you have an all black rack and maybe you're out there going till dusk, maybe it's a long road trip, whatever. Gonna be nice to let people know exactly where our rack is. That way us and our family stay safe and we get there with no accidents. The cradle itself here is gonna have pretty much an 18C standard grooving in here, which is gonna be great to go ahead and hold on to most of your standard bikes. And of course you do have this little guy right here that makes it a little transposable. However, I don't think a lot of us are really going to be taking full advantage of this that much. Now, maybe if you have a way shorter bike, maybe a kid's bike may need you to actually bring that in to go ahead and account for the smaller wheelbases. But ultimately, probably not going to give you a lot of versatility there. The real versatility of this rack actually comes from its center hold here. So this guy right here is giving us a frame contact. What that means, we're not going to be able to actually transport our carbon frame bikes is that can end up warping it and deteriorating it. However, the other issue you really run into with other frame style bikes is that they have a hard time getting a good purchase on certain bikes. What's great about this guy, we have 360 degrees of rotation here on this center hold for our center mass. So we're going to have no trouble conforming to almost any bike out there, whether it be a vertical posting, horizontal, or like you see here today, a diagonal. Even if it's low on one of those step through bikes, we're going to be able to get to it, even if it's high. What's awesome about that is that versatility. So I really do like that. Yeah, you're kind of losing on the wheelbase, but again, you're kind of getting back to that versatility on the center. So you do have two straps on either end. So that's kind of what I was saying. It is a little bit of an eyesore, but it does a great job of actually securing your bikes in here as you are getting three points of contact to actually secure it to your carrier. Now talking about capacity, you do have a 35 pound weight capacity per bike, and you're gonna have a pretty decent time getting most of your standard and even up into these mountain bike ranges of actually transporting your bikes. Now, if you're starting to look for some of your heavier bikes, you're gonna have to start looking at some of your more premium carriers. First one that obviously comes to mind is the Kuat Envy 2.0. That guy's gonna be the top of the line though, so it's definitely gonna be a little crazy, especially if you're comparing this to the destination. But to kind of give you guys an idea of the scale of where these bike carriers can go. Well, it's not gonna take me too much time to actually get this bike off of our carrier. To do that, I'm just gonna simply press in on either side of our levers to release my strip. These guys do have a nice little rubber coated, um, or just kind of a little rubber holder here that you can actually slide around your strip making sure that you're not interacting too negatively there with the rim. And one thing I really like is these little holes right here. Makes it really easy to actually go down and cinch these down. I don't have to pinch here, especially if my hands are wet or cold. I'll have no issue actually getting purchased and getting them out of there. I'm gonna go ahead and just pull this guy out, set him off to the side. That way he's not interacting with me. So I wanna get it off. 
repeat that process on the other side. And that does bring us to our last hold here on our bike. So what I like to do with these guys, throw a hand through, bring it on the back side of your frame, and then you can kind of use your off hand here to push this guy in place until you can actually go ahead and rotate it all the way out. Then we just simply want to let that holder slide down, get a good purchase on your bike, and lift it away. And there we are, ready to ride, which is great. Now mounting it um, can be pretty much the same little process, obviously in reverse. The only thing I'd watch out for, these strips sometimes like to get caught underneath their wheels. What can be really helpful, dipping that wheel inside here a little bit and then catching it and then allowing it to cinch down can be very, very helpful. Now, this guy doesn't actually have a way of tilting away. The only thing we can do is actually drop this guy down. And to do that, we just need to open up this little lever here. So that knob spins away. That lets my lever go ahead. And now I can bring this down and into position. One thing I like to do, take your extra strip that actually holds on your wheels and simply insert that like so. That allows me to go ahead and secure that, not letting that mass pop up, which is gonna be great for later when we actually go to fold this up. Now, unfortunately today, A, we can't tilt this guy away, so we are pretty fixed on here on any kind of vehicle. Secondly, with our Bronco, it does le definitely has a little bit of contact here. You guys are gonna see this spare tire gonna walk itself right up into there and unfortunately gonna leave yourself very limited space to actually get anything out of here can't even open up this hatch so that is kind of a negative in my opinion with it however you're really gonna run into this issue with almost any four bike rack carriers I mentioned the Quad NV because we did try it out earlier and we still kind of had the same issue now I will say we got a little bit more because it could tilt away so maybe another carrier out there that does have another tilt away action is still gonna get you just a little bit more but even then you are gonna be kind of caught in this issue. Now, one thing that we did get to work fairly well was the Thule Hitching Post Pro. When I actually had my bikes removed and was able to tilt it down all the way, it actually was able to fully get out of the way and open. That was great to actually go ahead and get four bikes with us. Yes, we have to take them off, but then we actually have access to all of our cargo without having to take this whole thing out. So that could be a slight pivot. Again, though, that'll be a hanging style rack, and that definitely brings some more pros and cons into that whole discussion. So I'll leave that, guys, up to you. Well, one thing we want to look at here, too, is going to be our clearance that we're, we are adding. In my mind, this clearance is going to be just a little bit of an issue. Again, we are being pretty far from that rear axle. Now, it's not the worst thing I've ever seen, but it's definitely something to consider because as those front wheels go up, the back will go down. And right now, we're sitting at about 22 and 7 eighths of an inch to the very end of our carrier. So almost two feet or so, that's pretty good clearance. But like I said, we are pretty far from that rear axle. So if you do find yourself approaching very steep terrain consistently, it's something I would definitely check. If you find yourself, you're like, oh man, I know that really big hill I take on my roads. Consistently is going to be a thing. I check it just so we're not impacting our bikes too negatively. Don't want to be damaged anything, which is definitely, uh, definitely a no-go for us. So from the back of our bumper here to the very end of our carrier is going to give us our added length. Let me go ahead and get underneath that there so I don't have to fight that rise. And then from the very back here to the very end, that is putting us right at 47 and one quarter inches to the very end there, guys. So definitely going to be a lot of length to consider. We do have four bikes, though, on this platform, and we do have a way of quickly shortening it up. To do that, we're going to have this little clip and pin here. I'm sorry, just a little clip to pull out. Now, we are going to have a threaded bolt here and a nice little knob to go ahead and actually allow us to rotate that off. That's going to allow that to hang by that safety cable, which is very nice. If you're like me, a little forgetful, nice that it's hanging there. And now we're not going to go all the way back. We are going to have a stopping point before that. And you just kind of want to feel it right here. And then you can go ahead and actually get this aligned and start re-threading our bolt. One thing I really like about this guy is how large this knob is. It's not tiny. Uh, the two bike platform rack of this guy, kind of this, the destination, is a little smaller and it's definitely harder to actually like get tightened down. So I do like how we have the bigger knob because we're on the bigger carrier makes it really easy to go ahead and actually secure this. What's great about this, it's nice and solid here. Yes, it's got a slight little rock to it, but it's nothing we're gonna be hearing or feeling, I don't think, especially being so far in that driver's seat. And secondly, you can go ahead and really tighten this down if that's something you wanna do. And right there, you can see, I'm finally taking all that play, all that shake out. 
That in tandem with us holding on to those masks with our extra strap is going to make sure we don't have any contact. Now, of course, we have our nice little spare tire here. Don't think we're going to be too worried about this making contact, but if we were, nice that we have that little added protection for ourselves. Now, moving our way down, we can go ahead and see how much length we actually shaved here. So from the back of the bumper now to the very end of our wings, that's going to put you right about 20 and a half inches extended from the back of that bumper. So almost more than half of that length getting cut down. That's going to be great, especially as we're not actually that far from our spare tire now. It's not going to be probably impacting our driving that much differently. And secondly, we should be able to pull this in the garage, hopefully for ourselves. So maybe if we have too small of a garage, it might be a slight issue because we already do have that spare tire. But Nice that we can cut that down for ourselves. Now, when we are in this position, I will say your backup camera is going to be right here on this center position. So you're going to lose a lot. And especially as you get four bikes up on there, that's just going to be an issue. So that's something I would also just kind of keep in mind. But that's going to happen with almost any four bike rack carrier you have out there on the market. Moving our way down, though, we can see we do have ourselves a two inch shank here today, allowing ourselves to be utilized by our two inch hitch receiver. Now, it does also come with a threaded anti rattle hitch bolt here. These guys are pretty standard across the industry, but you love to see them. They're going to take that shake and play out, and we'll show you that in just a second. But we do have this nice little locking core here to go ahead and just make sure that your uh, carrier stays attached to your vehicle when you leave it unattended. Now, this little guy, though, that anti rattle that we talked about is excellent. As you guys are going to see, as I shake this, it shakes the entirety of our Bronco here today, meaning we're all in line with the one system, making for a nicer, smoother ride for ourselves, our bike rack, and especially our bikes. And that's always huge, especially with you have four bikes on there. You want to really reduce the movement that they have, making sure they're not crashing into each other, which is definitely great. Um, the one thing I will say about the destination, though, it doesn't have a good way of securing it innately, just your bikes to the carrier. So I might look at getting a cable lock system as well to go ahead and secure those. But nice that we do have that hitch lock to make sure our carrier stays attached when we're not there. Overall, though, guys, I think the destination is a great way. If you're looking to get four bike racks on here, or sorry, four bikes on a bike rack, and it's not too heavy. It doesn't really take too much time to walk it in and walk it off, and you're not going to hate it every time you actually have to move it, which is a huge benefit for me. Um, however, it does take up quite a lot of room. You would need a lot of room in your garage or somewhere to actually store this, so definitely keep that in mind if you do find yourself taking it off every now and then. Overall, though, guys, I think it's going to be a great little family-oriented bike rack or just friends, right? We've got a lot of people that might want to go biking to go ahead and make sure that we can enjoy our life to the fullest. The other things to watch out for, though, when you do have four bikes up on here, if you have a severe wheelbase on your wheels, you might start impacting your taillights just a little bit. However, that is going to be for your bigger bikes as those are pretty well positioned to the side of our Bronco. And we are so far from it that the emittance of the light should have no issue at all, alerting people when we are stopping. Other than that, though, guys, I think this is going to be a great way of getting your bikes to your destination with no trouble at all. Well, guys, I think that about does it for our look at the Holodrax Destination 4 Bike Rack Carrier here on the back of our 2021 Ford Bronco. I'm Bobby. Thank you for watching. Now we're going to go ahead and take it on our test course. First, we'll start with the slaloms. This is going to show the side to side action it's kind of going to mimic the movements that you'll see whenever you're driving down the road normally now we'll have the alternating speed bumps this is going to be more so like the uneven roads and some of that uneven terrain you might be traveling on and see how it holds up 